that God has placed in my heart. It's uh, God's uh, finishing grace. Amen? But anyway, before we go into that, a um, few weeks ago, we were we attended a sales convention in Monte Carlo for our company and uh, with my wife. And uh, after the convention, we had the side trip, the break. Mostly we were we traveled to other countries in Europe, uh, in Switzerland, and then uh, and we were mostly riding the train. And uh, I enjoyed riding the train. Right? I feel more secure. I don't know about it, but uh, riding the train is more uh, comfortable, more relaxing. And uh, while I was in the train, I overheard about this man and a woman. They were talking. I, I could sense they were not husband and wife. Then the, the woman said to the man, the woman said to the man, you know what? Every time you smile, I feel like inviting you to my <laughs> Then the man said, by the way, can I ask you a question? Okay, what is it? Are you single? The woman replied, No, I'm not. I'm a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, God is finishing. <laughs> start doing things, perhaps diet, going to school, a family, starting a family, starting a business, or starting a church, you know. Starting is easy. Finishing is what can be difficult. A young lady or a young woman can have a baby, but it takes a woman to raise a child. Any two people can get married, but it takes a commitment to stay with it for the long haul. Anyone can have a dream, a goal, but it takes determination, perseverance, and a made-up mind to see it come to pass. The question is that, will you start, but will you finish? Will you finish that diet? Will you finish school? Will you finish raising your children? I know too many people start off well, have big dreams, they're excited about their future, but along the way, perhaps they experience setbacks. It's taking longer than they thought. Somebody did not do what they said, over time, they get discouraged and think, what's the use? What the heck? It's never going to work out. But the Bible says in Hebrews 12, verse 2, to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 also says that my grace is sufficient for you for my strength my power works best in your weakness my friend god has not given us the grace to start but he has also given us the grace to finish amen so whenever you're tempted to get discouraged on pursuing your goal or your dream or perhaps give up on a marriage relationship or give up on a project. Remind yourself, I was not created to give up. 
I was not created to quit. I was created to finish. Amen? We have to learn how to let go of this kind of achievement. Let go of self-pity. Let go of what somebody said. And this is what I've learned. If you will keep moving forward in faith, looking unto your Jesus, your Savior, your Lord, who is the author and finisher of your faith, our faith, you will experience that extra strength that you did not have before. A force pushing you forward. And that's what I call God's finishing grace. Amen? About three months ago, uh, most of you know that I, I, I ran the Boston Marathon. I prepared for it. I was ready for it. I was determined to really finish that race because I don't want to go home not being an official Boston Marathon finish. I was, I was really made up. I was really uh, determined to finish it. But you know, in Boston, the uh, city was well known for uh, changing its climate, its weather in every hour. And for the first time, I've experienced four, <coughs> the four seasons in a marathon. I mean, it was raining, suddenly it was sunny, it was hot, and it was windy, things like that. So my body was kind of responding not too good. And in fact, um, I, I was thrown out. I threw up like three times. And I was really feeling terrible. And while I was at mile 15, my body was just complaining already. <laughs> that's it, that's it. I can't take it anymore. But at the eve of that day, I was just meditating on what I was sharing to you, the verses that I was sharing to you. The grace of God is sufficient because that evening I was just focusing on, on the Word of God. My grace is sufficient. My power works best in your weakness. Look unto me. Just look unto me. I'm the author and finisher of the faith. So that was in my mind. So while I was struggling, while I was struggling, and about my body was already clean up, my mind, my heart, my spirit was telling my body, you can do this anyhow. The grace of God is there for you to finish it. I was tempted to go to the medical tent, and I know once, I go there, they will stop me and they will pull me. The Boston organizers, they were very strict. If they see you really going down, they will stop you and they don't care whatever because perhaps they are scared of being sued. You know, They're, that's how strict they were. They were. And, but, you know, I was just so determined. My heart, my mind, my whole being was Full of the word of God that to start eating, I was just meditating on the word. You know? And you know, at mile 20, they had this longest hill, almost like a mile, very steep. And of all places, when when your body is about to crash, here comes the 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 the, the mountain, almost a mile. Oh, Run that and. Lord, <laughs> where is it? But I just kept on running. My mind was focused on the Lord, who is the author and finisher of my faith. And you know what? In the last two miles, mile 24, because there's 26 points. Uh, I ran my fastest 
time in the last two miles for 18 minutes. The two miles that God has placed in my heart is uh, God's uh, finishing grace. Amen. But anyway, before we go into that, a um, few weeks ago we were we attended a sales convention in Monte Carlo for our company and uh, with my wife. And uh, after the convention, we had a side trip, a uh, break. So we mostly we were we traveled to other countries in Europe, uh, in Switzerland. And we were mostly riding the train. And uh, I enjoyed riding the train. Right? I feel more secure. I don't know about you, but uh, riding the train is more uh, comfortable, more relaxing. And uh, while I was in the train, I overheard about this man and a woman. They were. Okay, I, I could sense they were not husband anymore. Then uh, the woman said to the man, The woman said to the man, You know what? Every time you smile, I feel like inviting you to my <coughs> Then the man said, oh. By the way, can I ask you a question? Okay, what is it? Are you single? The woman replied, No, I'm not. I'm a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, God is finishing. <laughs> Project. 
Remind yourself, I was not created to give up. I was not created to quit. I was created to finish. Amen? We have to learn how to let go of this kind of Let go of self-pity. Let go of what somebody said. And this is what I've learned. If you will keep moving forward in faith, looking unto your Jesus, your Savior, your Lord, who is the author and finisher of your faith, our faith, you will experience the extra strength that you did not have before. A force pushing you forward. And that's what I call God's finishing grace. Amen? About three months ago, uh, most of you know that I, I, I ran the Boston Marathon. I prepared for it. I was ready for it. I was determined to really finish that race because I don't want to go home not being an official Boston Marathon finish. I was, I was really made up. I was really uh, determined to finish it. But you know, in Boston, uh, the city was well known for uh, changing its climate, its weather, in every hour. And for the first time, I've experienced four, <coughs> the four seasons in a marathon. I mean, it was raining, suddenly it was sunny, it was hot, and it was windy, things like that. So my body was kind of responding that to good. And in fact, um, I, I was thrown up. I threw up like three times. And I was really feeling terrible. And while I was at mile 15, my body was just complaining already. <laughs> that's it, that's it. I can't take it anymore. But at the eve of that day, I was just meditating on what I was sharing to you, the verses that I was sharing to you. The grace of God is sufficient because that evening I was just focusing on, on the Word of God. My grace is sufficient. My power works best in your weakness. Look unto me. Just look unto me. I'm the author and finisher of the faith. So that was in my mind. So, while I was struggling, while I was struggling, and about my body was already taken up, my mind, my heart, my spirit was telling my body, you can do this anyhow. The grace of God is there for you to finish it. I was tempted to go to the medical tent, and I know once, I go there, they will stop me and they will pull me. The Boston organizers, they were very strict. If they see you really going down, they will stop you. And they don't care whatever, because perhaps they are scared of being sued. You know, They're, that's how strict they were. They were. And, but, you know, I was just so determined. My heart, my mind, my whole being was of the Word of God that to start eating, I was just meditating on the Word. You know? And, you know, at mile 20, they had this longest hill, almost like a mile, very steep. And of all places, when, when your body is about to crash, here comes the, 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 the mountain, almost a mile, you cannot run that. Lord, <laughs> where is it? But I just kept on running. My mind was focused on the Lord, who is the author and finisher of my faith. And you know what? In the last two miles, mile 24, there's 26 points. 
Uh, I ran my fastest time in the last two miles for 18 minutes. The two miles that I ran, the last two was 18 minutes. And that was like nine minutes per mile. I've never done that in my whole life. And to God be the glory, I was able to finish the Boston Marathon below the time being. Praise God, you know. I was, I was just out there. And, uh, and um, yeah, that was an experience of God's finishing grace. Amen. Amen. I was just so focused on the Lord that Yes, my body was just trembling, about to give up, but the Spirit of the Lord, His Word just kept me going. He took me to the finish line. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. His grace is sufficient and His power works best in our weaknesses. So church, let's just continue to look unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. Now, what does it mean to look unto Jesus? Well, we can think of it like this. If you are drowning and somebody sees you and you look <coughs> unto Him, when you look unto Him, you are turning to Him, expecting Him to rescue you. Right? In the same manner, when we look to our Savior, Jesus, our Lord Jesus, we expect Him to save us from whatever saving that we have in this life. It could be a healing issue, it could be a financial issue, it could be a relationship issue, whatever the need is. After all, He's our Savior. He did not come only to save us from going to the lake of fire, but whatever we need here on earth while we are living, is our Savior to save us from whatever saving that we need. Amen? So, now, yeah, that's, that's what looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, you, you you come to him in prayer and you believe him because you know that he is powerful, he is mighty, and most of all, he loves you. Amen. Most of us here are parents. We love our children. One call from our children. We forget what we do. We focus. Right, Mother Lee? We focus right away on our, our child. Ready to rescue. Yes, my son, my daughter. What do you need? But more is our Heavenly Father. And that is how God wants us to live. To look unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Amen? Amen. Second point. Another principle that I've learned through the years. Listen to this. The enemy doesn't try to stop you from starting anything. He has seen a lot of people start. That doesn't bother him. But when you have a made up mind and keep pushing forward in faith, taking new ground, when he sees you getting closer to your breakthrough, he will all work over time to try to keep you from finishing. Don't get discouraged when people come against you. When people try to mock you, say negative things about you, or when you experience setbacks. That's a sign that you are moving forward to your victory. And the enemy was fine when you got started. He was fine when you were far from finishing or far from your breakthrough. No big deal for him. 
But when you begin to start making progress, that's what gets his attention. He starts throwing obstacles. And today maybe you, you, you may be up for some challenges. It's because you are moving forward. You're making progress. Just keep reminding yourself that your Lord Jesus is the author and finisher of your faith. He helped you get started. That's great. But there's something more important. He's going to help you finish. He did not bring you this far to leave you. In fact, there's a special promise that is so dear to us to my heart. I'd like to share that with you. It's in Philippians 1.6. Philippians 1.6 says, He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. Amen? Let's personalize it. Let's, let's receive it as if God was really talking to you. Let's read it and let's change you to make it me. Okay? Everyone. He who began a good work in me is faithful to complete it. Receive that in your spirit, in your heart. And I love what the message translation of this verse. Do we have that? Okay. This is the... You know the message translation of the Bible, right? It says, There has never been the slightest doubt in my mind that the God who started this great work in you would keep it at, would keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish. I love that. Flourishing finish. A finish more rewarding than you ever imagined. In fact, that's what I felt when I finished the, the Boston Marathon. In fact, uh, I would describe the Boston Marathon as it's, it's the most difficult, hardest marathon I've ever tried. It was brutal. But it was beautiful. In fact, when I saw Minerva, I never tried in a marathon, but when I saw Minerva, I cried. <laughs> oh, Minerva. For the first time, I cried. I really cried. I just felt so great and so wonderful. Just worship praising the Lord for what He did. Amen? Amen. Alright. Third point. Uh, how many of you know the story of Joseph? Okay. That's one of my favorite stories in the Old Testament. We can find that in Genesis 37. I'll just I'll give you a, a summary of what uh, happened in his life. Um, Joseph, when he was a young boy, God gave him a dream that one day he would rule a nation. His father, uh, Jacob, loved him very much. Everything started off uh, very well, so great for Joseph. He has big dreams. He has a, a very supportive family. Life was good. But when Joseph was about 17, things started to go wrong. His brothers became jealous of him and turned on him. They threw him into a pit and left him there to die. Eventually, they changed their minds and sold him into slavery. He was taken to Egypt and resold to a man named Potiphar. Joseph hadn't really done anything wrong. Yet his world, whole world had been turned upside down. It looked as if his dream was dead. But he had been betrayed by his brothers and a slave in a foreign country. If that wasn't bad enough, they put him to prison for years for something that he didn't do. Joseph, I could imagine, must be depressed or angry, bitter, upset. 
because nothing had turned out right. But Joseph understood this principle. He knew that he has the grace of God to start and he has the grace of God to finish what God has placed in his heart. He knew the enemy wouldn't be fighting him if he wasn't heading towards his destiny. <coughs> so he stayed in faith. He kept doing the right thing when the wrong thing was happening. He knows he was not working unto people, but working unto them. So one day, the Pharaoh, Pharaoh, the leader of the nation, had a dream that he did not understand. So Joseph was able to interpret it, interpret the dream. And uh, Pharaoh was so impressed with Joseph that he brought him out of prison and put him in charge of the whole nation. Second in command. Joseph's dream came to the past. Friends, when we have that attitude, like Joseph, you cannot stay defeated. I love Joseph. He inspires me a lot. In fact, he is one of my Bible heroes. And uh, I always look, always read his story because it's part, part of the plan to offer for us. In fact, instead of meditating on those negative things, meditate on what God says. Let's meditate that our Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Let's meditate that our God who began a good work in our lives is faithful to complete it. Let's meditate on the truth, on the fact that the grace of God in our lives is very sufficient and his power his strength works best in our weaknesses amen remember this the enemy doesn't fight people who are going the wrong way people who are off the course people who are disguised bitter angry upset that's what the enemy wants us to be he won't touch you when you're in there, in that situation. But He comes against people who are headed towards the fullness of their destinies. People who are taking no ground. People like you who are going, coming into a flourishing finish. Amen? So my friends, our attitude should be, I have a made up mind, I am determined, I'm going to move forward in spite of the laws, in spite of the negative report, in spite of the critics. I'm in it to win it. Everyone, say after me. I'm in it to win it. Say it again. I'm in it to win it. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Because he who began a good work in our lives is faithful to complete it. We're not moved by what we see or what we feel, but we're moved by what we know. And this is what we know. We have the grace of God to finish. Amen? Amen. Right. Praise the Lord. And the last point. This is what Apostle did in the scripture. Paul the Apostle, another Bible hero. He faced some huge mountains, you know that, right? And it didn't look as though he could fulfill his destiny. He was doing the right thing, sharing the good news, helping other people, but then he was arrested and put in prison. The closer he got to his destiny, the more obstacles he faced. He was alone in a dungeon on death row and it looked as though God had forgotten him. 
But Paul wasn't defeated. He wasn't depressed or feeling sorry for himself. And even though he was in chains, he couldn't be stopped from what from doing what God has placed in his heart. Since Paul couldn't go out and speak public publicly, he thought, no problem. I'll start writing. In fact, he wrote more than half of the books of the New Testament, right? And much of it was written when he was in prison. Here's a letter to the Ephesians. Here's a letter to the Philippians. Here's a letter to the Colossians. To the Romans. To the Corinthians. To the Symposia. I know what I mean is, but, uh, here we are, 2,000 years ago, we're still benefiting from the letters of Paul, right? We, we still feel his influence. And what the enemy meant for harm, God use it for his good. People may stop you. They may discredit you. They may belittle you. They may leave you out. Don't get upset. God will use them to propel you forward. And as long as you stay in faith, keep honoring God, you will accomplish your assignment. He is the author and finisher of our faith. In other words, in the midst of difficult difficulties, you can shine. You can be a bright light. That's exactly what happened before. And when Paul came to the end of his life, he said in 2 Timothy 4 7, I have fought the good part. I have finished the race. I have kept faith. What did Paul mean when he said that I fought the good fight? I finished the race. I have kept the faith. These three statements reflect Paul's struggles in preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus and his victory over those struggles. In his letter to Timothy, Paul is not commending himself. He was not happy. Ah, good job, my son. Good job, Paul. He was not saying that to himself. But rather, he was simply describing what the grace of God enabled him to do. And this is what I've been talking about this morning. God's finishing grace is available to you 24 7. God gave Paul the grace to start preaching the gospel of Christ and the grace to finish it in spite of the struggles he faced in doing his assignment. So by declaring, I have finished the race, Paul is telling Timothy that he had completed the course set before him. He had left nothing undone. He was ready to cross the finish line into heaven. Amen? And in closing, Today, I know some of you are passionate about something. Perhaps you have a goal, you have a dream. Or maybe you used to be passionate about your dreams or goals in life. But please hear me very well. Not everyone is called to be a pastor, to be a preacher, to be an evangelist. Some perhaps maybe called to be a businessman or a businesswoman, a politician, a, uh, a, a career woman in the medical field, or maybe a housewife raising godly children to do mighty exploits in this land. We all have different gifts and calling from, from our God. But this I know, the gifts and calling of <coughs> God is irrevocable. That's Romans 11 29. I know I did not answer able to put that, but remember Romans 11 29. The gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. So perhaps some of you, 
used to be passionate about a dream or a goal that you have set in life, but for some reason, maybe some setbacks happen. That passion got lost. It's gone. You've lost your seriousness. And if that's you, if that's you, I'm here. I've come to revive your fire. God is not done with you. You have not seen your best days. Shake off those blah blah blahs. Let go of those discouragement. There is a flame in you that is still alive. So I'm here to tell you, find that flame. Rekindle that fire. There is a fire burning in you. Keep that fire burning. Stir up the gifts that God has given you. Pursue your calling with determination, knowing that He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. And I will say to you this morning what Paul said to Timothy. 2 Timothy 1.7 God did not give you a spirit of fear, but He gave you power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? Amen. So guard your fire. Keep your fire burning, church. So you, you were not created to give up. You were not created to quit. Yes, we can find an excuse, but you have to take a deep breath and say, I am determined to finish my course.